Hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to my vlog, the My Advice vlog. Sorry it took so long. We had some technical difficulties for a little while and I was kind of running all over the world doing stuff. So I'm back now and um, I am ready to talk to you guys about uh, cosplay does not equal consent. And that movement uh, started this year, like a little earlier this year, and I guess um, it has something to do with like cosplayer females uh, wearing scantily clad costumes and being harassed apparently, but um, you know like being talked to by guys about you know they're sexy or taking their pictures without their permission and stuff like that. Um, the reason why my explanation of that was so confusing is because it is confusing. There isn't really a concrete definition of what this movement is or does. I get that they're against uh, female harassment. I get that. Um, which is a good thing to be against. Like, people shouldn't be harassed without their permission or talked to without their permission or have pictures taken of them or videos without their permission when they're wearing sexy costumes and things like that. But um, the reason why it's confusing is because there has never been a concrete talk, sit down talk with adults in the anime community about what's okay and what is not okay to do um, in at these conventions with people that are sexy or not sexy. There just hasn't, that talk hasn't happened yet. And I think that's one of the major problems of confusion because a lot of the creepers, quote unquote, have probably never had anyone explain to them common knowledge of this is how you treat a girl in real life or whatever. <laughs> um, and I just think it is, it's definitely something that should be, be given much more concrete definitions. So I wrote down a couple of little points. Um, and I think that these are things that should really help out a lot of girls in the community. Um, if someone comes up to you and you're not attracted to them, like just for a um, going back, in one of my other blogs I talked about how uh, sexual harassment sometimes can be vague because I think that girls count harassment a lot of the time as someone who they are not physically or sexually attracted to. But if they are attracted to that person and that person is talking to them in, in a suggestive manner, then that's okay. So that's why harassment is such, has such blurred lines. Um, so if someone comes up to you and talks to you and you're wearing your Phoenix outfit, your, you know, skin tight bodysuit, and this guy is a little creepy and he's, you know, trying to like touch your shoulder or take pictures of you or something weird, tell him you don't like that. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. If it escalates from there, you can find a member of the IRT or, you know, just say, hey, back off. You're bothering me. I don't like this. As simple as that. Typically people get that, that message if you just say, hey, leave me alone. That's usually the end of it. Um, and I think that's a lot of the problem with some of the nerd boys that attend these conventions is that they don't have this clear line. So it turns into no holds barred weekend. There's all these girls out in these half naked and I should be able to do whatever the hell I want to. It's your job to tell them that they can't. If you don't say no, they will continue to think that it's okay. And that's probably some of the problem here is that a lot of these nerds don't have any just cause to stop. They don't have anyone saying, hey, that's not okay, except for this movement that's extremely vague and doesn't really do anything to change how stuff is. If they just have people take pictures with this sign that says cosplay does not equal consent, that's a cute start. But how about having an intellectual conversation where you sit people down and you have like a roundtable discussion? Um, I think one of the other issues is probably that unlike the video game community where there are community leaders, there are people that, that 
gamers look up to, you know, for information. There's all of these hubs of information that you can get from gamers by gamers about, you know, things that are happening in the community. Anime community, even though it is a community, is extremely disorganized and doesn't have that. People don't know who the hell run anime conventions. No one knows the the con chairs and all of these other things. I know a lot of con chairs because I've worked for a lot of anime conventions. But the general populace who attends these anime conventions, they don't know who run them. And they probably don't they probably have no reason to care because these people have not made themselves a concrete um, influence in the community. Create a community and um, make and create a community and make up rules for it. So I have a question here uh, from Medina for Life. Do you believe that cosplaying in scantily clad clothing only further perpetuates the objectification of women as sexual beings? Is it more harmful or empowering? What is the right balance? That's a really good question. So, um, females that cosplay in scantily clad clothing, like Ivy Doom Kitty, and you know a lot of these other cosplayers that have been that one uh, I can't remember that girl's name, but she's the really really big breasted Morgan, who's like really accurate. Um, that picture was floating around for a while. Um, I think that girls like being sexy. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've worn scantily clad costumes. Those are some of my more popular costumes, to be honest. But um, female objectification is a thing that I feel women created and white knight males created, like men who say whatever will please a woman to get on her good side. Um, I think that things objectify you if you let them objectify you. I don't feel that objectification is a concrete thing. It's extremely vague, and I don't feel that, you know, there is anything that should make a woman feel objectified. If she want to wear, if she wants to wear like a Lilu costume, which if anyone has ever seen The Fifth Element, Lilu is wearing bandages, white bandages over her breast and her vagina. That's it. If you want to dress that way and you don't feel objectified and you're confident and you feel okay with yourself, you're not objectified. I feel that you're objectified if you let yourself be objectified, to be honest. If you feel that you have a brain, a working brain, and you're confident in yourself and you don't care about what other people think, I don't think there's a way that someone can objectify you. Um, and because it's up to you to feel whether being sexual is negative or positive. I think being a sexy person it can be positive. It's empowering. It gives you a lot of confidence. Um, and I guess that technically kind of answered your second question. And what is the right balance? Um, the right balance is a difficult question because there are, like in one of my other blogs I stated, there are feminists that are body positive feminists who believe that a girl can dress however she wants to, have whatever image she wants to, and should not, um, it's offline, I think. Oh, no. Uh, it's not showing in the frame, bro. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, there is, um, there are body positive feminists that believe that you should be able to look however you want to and not be objectified. And that no one should be able to uh, tell you what you can look like or not. And then there are other feminists that believe that no woman should be sexy ever. And that they shouldn't wear sexy clothes and they shouldn't do any of those things. And they shouldn't let anyone, um, they sh any, any form of sexuality is objectification. Um, and it's just really, those are the things that I believe are confusing and that I believe give people such a convoluted view of how to approach women. And I don't think that anyone, like I said before, has like a concrete statement where they've sat down and had this round table and created 
boundaries for these people to understand this is what's okay, this is what's not okay. Let's come to a general consensus of this. People are too busy arguing and bumping heads and, you know, not getting along, which is a lot of the problem as well. Um, let's see, if girls like being sex symbols, why do they dislike objectification? I have had that exact same question. I'm not sure, <laughs> to be totally honest, because as I've stated in one of my other blogs, that why is, why is being sexy bad? I have no idea. I don't think that being sexy is a negative thing. It, again, is up to individual responsibility to go on and choose whether you view whatever uh, somebody's response to you as being negative or positive. A lot of girls like Jessica Rabbit, but dislike if a guy, if they, like, for example, dress as Jessica Rabbit, and then a guy comes up and talks to them, and they don't like that guy, and then they suddenly don't like the attention and it's harassment. That's very confusing. And those are some of the situations where the lines are blurred, and it probably should be more concrete. Individual responsibility comes into play here a lot, and you should tell someone whether you like the attention or not. Um, uh, okay, and he said, yeah. Um, I mean, I agree. I, I don't think the sex symbols are bad, but a lot of females tend to get confused on whether they like the attention or not. Um, and back to what I was saying about anime leadership, anime community leadership, I think first there needs, anime does have a community, give or take, but they don't have any rules. A lot of the convention rules that I've seen have been don't bring real weapons, don't do drugs and drink underage, and like other things like that. But I've never seen anything about don't harass people or, you know, if someone makes you uncomfortable, go to this person. Go to somebody with an IRT vest or go go to, you know, go find someone who can possibly help you. Don't stay in that situation. And that brings me to this story that happened probably about a month ago uh, with this guy named Christopher Ross. I'm sure... Um, if you're friends with like any nerd females or in any kind of group on Facebook, you've probably seen the story about this guy and you can probably actually Google it. This kid um, goes to a lot of conventions and he like meets girls and he, this one specific girl that created the story on him, she was harassed by him um, consistently and she posted like all the conversations that she had with him and he was like, really kind of, he kind of was like a sociopath because he was talking about all of this like devious sexual stuff towards her and, you know, saying all of this extremely inappropriate stuff and was really crazy and rude and bizarre. It got really bizarre. And um, she blocked him on Facebook and blocked him on DeviantArt, I think she said, and she posted his picture and she said, you know, this is one of those guys that you should avoid. And it, it floated around the internet and everyone talked about it because I had had at least three or four posts about that. One thing um, that I think is interesting about that, because I actually had a situation similar to that, um, but the problem with that is nothing necessarily stops that guy from going to other conventions and doing this to other people. Not to be scary, but it doesn't. There is no organized circumstance where every convention in that general area will go, this is the guy who's been harassing all these females, let's avoid him, and let's make a concrete effort to keep him out of conventions and to stop him from hurting these people, any other girls. There hasn't been that conversation. Conventions are so big now that they are worried about people coming in, not necessarily avoiding it. That's why lots of teenage girls go to these conventions and wear these scantily clad costumes. And a lot of guys don't know that they're 15 and 16. And the parents don't know that they're going to conventions and doing what they're doing all weekend with their friends. And um, 
if the parents knew that, these conventions would not make as much money as they as they are now, uh, to be honest. And that's probably why the lines remain blurred. I feel like a lot more comic book conventions are stepping up and taking this movement um, to go wow. ahead and, you know, stop the inappropriate harassment of female cosplayers. But anime conventions, um, I don't believe they do. So the other question that I have is what constitutes as harassment? I can only go off of what I would personally view as harassment. So harassment to me is someone being overtly sexual, sexually inappropriate towards me. Saying, hey, I want to F you. Hey, you have a fat ass. Hey, you have this, this, and that. Trying to touch me without me wanting them to touch me. Uh, trying to take inappropriate pictures of me, which I have had people take pictures of me while I was sitting down in a costume where my cleavage was obviously out. Um, and things like that. In any, like I said, any touching inappropriately, touching my knee or my arm or, you know, trying to brush up against my butt, stuff like that. That's harassment to me. Or someone trying to force you into something that you don't want them to do. That's harassment. What isn't harassment and what is harassment is, I believe, up to that individual. And like I said, that's why it's so confusing, because there is no concrete boundary. Feminists feel this way. Regular girls feel this way. Um, men feel one way. White knight males feel another way. It's this whole convoluted argument that doesn't have a centered, you know, thing. And I'm glad that makes sense to you. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's just a really interesting uh, concept. It's it's a cool idea that they wanted to make this, in my opinion, the cosplay does not equal consent thing. However, I don't believe that it's organized very well because no one knows what the hell it's about. And I don't. I'm sure a lot of people don't. And I feel like if they want to raise a... Raising... Okay. To me, raising awareness doesn't mean anything. Making a change means something. When you raise awareness, people can choose to ignore it or listen to it. When you make a change, like start a roundtable discussion, like I was saying, have panels about this, make conventions, write this in their rule book, things that you should not and cannot do to other cosplayers without them consenting to it. Make those steps. Don't have people take pictures with an eraser board that says cosplay doesn't equal consent or, you know, their viewpoints on the matter. That's cool, but that doesn't change anything. Make a documentary. Listen to people's stories. I don't, you know, that is what makes a change in my opinion. Um, and I, I think I'm open for any other questions or anything like that if anyone wants to add anything in, anyone in the room or anyone on the internet. <laughs> so uh, I'm just prepping the Xbox for the stream so I can seamlessly move to one to the other. Oh, okay. What's up to everybody out there watching on the stream? Probably not having heard or see another voice. <laughs> Uh, I would give it like a minute or so. Okay. Nobody comes around in a minute. Can you click on Facebook and I can see if anyone. Sure. Is. You even got a prayer request. Right, I even got a prayer request. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Got some comments on it. Check it out. Oh, 
which one? Oh, okay. Alright, let's scroll up. Check back to Twitch real quick. Okay. Yeah. Now go back to the uh, web page. Open up the uh, internet. Back up. Scroll down. What now? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. What? You guys are uh, here. Yeah. Pull him back up. Let's see if someone's adding something up. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Okay. Alright, guys. Well, I don't have any more questions as of now. <coughs> Um, so I hope you enjoyed my Try It Alive vlog. Uh, for the next ones, I'm going to start having guests because a lot of people have said that they would like to be on my vlog, which is awesome and exciting. Um, and let's see, the next one is actually going to be about the friend zone. So check in for that, and I'm going to try to do it within the next couple of weeks. I definitely want my vlog to be a lot more regular and um, not as spaced out. Like the spacing, just to apologize for that, it's been trial and error of, um, <laughs> it's been trial and error of, you know, figuring out what works, figuring out what doesn't work. So maybe the live broadcast will be cool because then it'll still be in the archive and people can come back and watch it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching, and thanks, Medina, saying that you're going to tune in. Shout out to Medina. <laughs> so, all right. Bye, guys. What? What? What the fuck is Marvel doing? So how does it go into the archive? So it's already yeah. there. Oh. I can just stop this at any time. But just so that everybody gets a seamless one right quick, um, we're switching over to Wednesday night fights like right now. Uh you guys wanna play over here? Like, what does that yeah. say? Hey guys, a shadow what? Oh, Shadow Vegeta. What's oh. up? Oh my god. That's cool. Wednesday night fights is coming up with uh Nightwing Xavier. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nightwing Xavier. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, that one. Like, that didn't make any sense, though. Hero. No, get away from me. Shit. What? what the fuck? Oh, my God. Okay. So, let's go ahead and just pop my view in. Pop my view in. What? Even you know that it make no goddamn sense. Come on now. Uh oh, Jeff, you start to sound like one of those black people at the store. Don't even pretend like you did that shit on purpose. Something's wrong with your Xbox. That shit made no sense. You just put the game in and it changes or something? What's that? You put the game in and it changes. No, fuck. Oh, you see the Xbox is already on the stream. What the fuck is something? No. Do y'all want to start with Super or do you want to start with Marvel? Marvel. All right. Then we can lose. Then I can lose Super. No, we don't start with Super. Me, yeah, Now let's start. Actually, kind of think of it. Let's start with Marvel because uh, Curtis Matthews supposed to be coming here. Well, all the fans started. Okay. All fans started. <laughs> no, no. I'm saying you you read the wall post. I did. They was like Super. I'm down to play Super. I have to play okay. Super. I, mean, I guess I everybody Marvel. wanted to play Super. Well, I guess we'll do Marvel though. Yeah, I, I won the first game. I, I was nice and let you get back in. Don't don't get cocky with it. You little shit. Wait, let me show you the zero shit. No. Oh, it's pretty decent though. It's hard, but it's pretty decent. <coughs> hey, where's my copy of Marvel on it? Uh, uh, I have no idea. I don't have an Xbox.
Okay. I mean, I got a copy, so. No, I mean, you know, Kevin still is going to need one regardless. That's cool for right now. Uh, uh, real. What? Let me get what? your copy. Wait, no, I said I don't. I, I have a copy at home. Oh, I don't, but I don't I have a reason to copy yours, so. <laughs> that exists? No, I was uh, asking. You got to keep that pulled over yeah. there, see, because. What happens is I'm, that means everybody no, just sees all the Oh my god! Well, my <laughs> yeah. <is bullied>. yeah. <laughs> oh, I can think of a lot of those. As a matter of fact, just grab one of my laptops somewhere. Wait, Still, wait, diary of a window. Okay, well, let me. Oh, let me check. Yeah. <coughs> Ready? No, no. So, no, no, still, 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 still pull it over to the side. Mm, 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 pull. Oh, the whole window? Mm, yeah. Mm. And just drag it to the right. So good. There you are. Combo. Look, I can't usher y'all up to, to motherfucking. I can't make y'all ride up to Evo if you don't be dropping shit. Give me a nerdy ooh, character. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How do you not think of a nerdy ooh, character? Ooh, ooh. Huh? I got fire another flame sword, busted, uh, lightning bolt. <coughs> My brain's busted right now. How do you not think of a nerdy character? Give me a nerdy character. You just had a whole circle of people sitting there and name a bunch of nerdy characters. Why you didn't just pull one of them out of the air? Why you didn't shut up? You the one that's doing homework. That should have been done a long time ago. And then I got a version for you. Okay. Easy. So which laptop can I use? This one? Uh, I already do that. Thank you. Except for that. Uh, you, 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 you just bring Hagrid with the point yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You You're on my show. Hi, Melanie. No. I'm not. My show was first. Your show was canceled now. You off the air. You over like your way. Cancel <laughs> like Young <laughs> Justice. Oh. Today is the day oh, yeah. this shit gets canceled. I, I, I perfect, perfected it. Uh, so I can eat like Let me sit up now. Hey. What? The human on next characters. Oh, for Christ's sake. What the hell is my copy? They're on? everywhere. Name somebody. Somebody. There you go. That's a nerdy character. How do you not think of anyone who's a nerd? Go ahead and play Super Joe. So I find my. <laughs> you better fix it. There you go. That's another nerdy character. He's not nerdy. What the hell he is? He is socially. Who the fuck do you know says dynamite gal? I got it. Well, he's socially accepted. No, he's right. Like <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph is a bully. Say night fight starts. That's why nobody likes Wreck-It Ralph. Uh -uh, he's I'm going to read it. I like Wreck-It Ralph. No, I'm talking about in the show. I right. mean, the end of the movie. So, so, can you do me a favor? Change this TV. <coughs> Wreck-It Ralph is a bully, though. Change yes, it. Get over next. He's a villain. That's what makes him a bully automatically. His job was to be a bully. His job was to be a bully. No. Just uh, like Bowser's job was to be a bully. He didn't push Fix and Felix around. Yes, he did. Them neighbors kicked him out of the party. He, he destroyed the party. He wrecked the party. He did not They the said party. he was going to wreck it, and he did. He I rocked the party that, that rocked the body. <laughs> what? Why, why was that so sensual? I have to support <laughs> your back. Okay. Because oh. back All right, Jeff, you got this. Yeah. Important part of your body. Like your spinal cord. Thank you. No. No. I like you, but I don't like you. I like you, Jeff. Don't like me, Quilly. Damn it, I need some sort of resentment so I can have a reason for not liking you back. No. You're not making this easy for me, Melanie. I'm not. He's I, a grumpy old man. You're a grumpy old fatty. You know what? Chicken butt. You're an old man. You're an old man. You're just mad because your ass is You're just mad because your ass is so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and the room said, Bing! F granddad. Insert. Please. <coughs> there, just a second. Dynamite gal. Yes. Yes. That is not socially acceptable to say. Dynamite gal is socially acceptable to say. What does that mean? Hey, look, German Luger is playing Street Fighter 4. Maybe I should play him in a Vega Vega mirror match. Oh. I think I will. What does that mean, guys? What? Uh, you saw Wreck-It Ralph, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, you're a dynamite gal. Yeah. Super Street Fighter for Super Street Fighter 4. Uh, oh, no. <coughs> oh, no. This one attached oh, yeah. to the camera. What's that? This one attached to the camera. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's My brother. And they wanted me to try. Alright, let's see who's online. Hey, they got team battles now. <coughs> you better win. You better suck it. <laughs> Are we rolling? Yeah. We're already rolling? Why didn't you tell me we're already rolling? God damn it. That's the